QCQ, Mike Mike Zero, Oscar, Papa X-Ray. Kilo, Kilo, Dex, Bravo, Tango. So in this little box here, this is where all the magic happens. Hello folks and welcome. My name is Colin, call sign MM0OPX, and in this video we're going to be talking about the king of vertical antennas, and that is the 5 8 wave. Now, with the exception of the 10 meter band, or perhaps the 11 meter band, 5 8 wave don't seem to be that popular. I don't see a lot of them about, I don't see them for um, the, the other bands readily available on the market. So I decided I actually wanted to build one. I thought it was a very interesting antenna, and it's on paper, modeling wise, it certainly gives an advantage over a quarter wave or a half wave. Now, how much of a advantage in the real world that gives you, that's a little bit debatable, but I want to give one of these antennas a go. Now, obviously because the antenna is 5 eighths of a wavelength, it can be very long. So, I've made this antenna for 17 meters. Now, 17 meters is the lowest band I could fit uh, on my 12 meter spider beam pole, which is the longest pole support that I, I have here, so 17 meters it is. But not only that, 17 meters is probably my favorite band, probably because it's not a contest band. You've got a lot more chance to work DX on that band because you've not got these super stations with the multiple stacked Yagis, people running big power. It tends to be people with just normal wire antennas on 17 meters and it makes it a much more level playing field. So that's exactly what I've done. Another reason why I don't think 5 8 wave uh, antennas are popular is because you can't just hook up coax. Now, if you take a quarter wave antenna, you can just hook your coax up uh, and put the center to the vertical, put the shield to the radials, and away you go. And the same goes for an N-fed half wave. So you could make a half wave vertical, put your 49 to 1, 64 to 1 uh, at, at, you know, at the bottom, and then you've got a half wave vertical. Great. So the 5 8 wave, you can't do that. So it's in between that. So what you need to do is, at the feed point, you need to make something called a, a matching network. Now, there's a number of ways you, you can do that, and I've, I've opted for something called an LC match, LC coupler. There, there's loads of different names for it. But in essence, what I've done at the feed point is I've added a little bit of, of inductance and have a little bit of, in, of capacitance. So our inductor is just a little coil of wire, and our capacitor, which is effectively two conductors with a piece of insulating uh, material in the middle, and I'm going to show you that shortly. So it's not black magic, it's it's actually quite simple, but I'll put my hand up and say I actually got some help, um, you know, designing this LC match because of the um, the values that were involved. So I needed, uh, just look, I needed about seven picofarads um, of uh, capacitance, and then I needed... Uh, I needed three micro henrys of um, inductance. So I needed to put these figures um, and, and put them into a um, matching unit in order to make this antenna work. So the process for actually doing this was I cut my antennas first. So I used the basic formula 300 divided by the frequency, which gave me my full wave. I then multiplied that by five eighths of a wave. I'll put the calculations on in the screen. Um, and hopefully you can use these, understand them, and maybe adapt them if you want to make an antenna for yourself. So the first thing was, I cut my antenna wires to size, taking into account the velocity factor. Now, before I go any further, the 5 8 wave, you need to use radials. Unfortunately, you can't get away from it, it's an antenna that needs them. But I've mounted this antenna uh, off the ground, uh, about 2 metres off the ground, and I'm using two elevated radials, which are a quarter wavelength long each and um, these work absolutely fantastic, but they're tuned, so bear that in mind. You could ground mount, this, ground mount this antenna and just use 16 quarter wavelengths on the ground, and it'll work almost as well. Well, maybe not. Again, that's a bit debatable, but when you used tuned radials raised off the ground, um, you certainly need a fraction of those radials uh, than if you were to use a, a ground mounted system. So I built my antenna, um, and then I hooked those wires directly up to a piece of coax via an SO239. I then got my uh, rig expert antenna analyzer, and I then checked the complex components. Um, and so you basically have an X and a Z, or so basically the reactance uh, and the resistance. So I took these values and I inputted them 
into a piece of program or a program they called SimNEC, formerly known as SimSmith. It's an amazing little piece of software. I'll put a link to that down in the description. And um, I inputted these values. I told the software that I wanted to use a LC match. And just like magic, this piece of software told me how much inductance, how much capacitance I needed. And, and if I did that, I should get a match or a one-to-one -one SWR. That's exactly what I did. And lo and behold, it worked. Um, so quite amazing uh, what can be done in this day and age. So it's, it's been a new one for me, but uh, I've been able to build this antenna. And let me tell you, it works absolutely fantastic. Now, conditions are good on the bands, but I've been using this antenna uh, just uh, a little while ago there. Um, and it's working great. Working stations all over Europe. I even had a guy in the States give me a call absolutely outstanding so i think what we'll do now is we'll actually take a look at the matching unit look and have a look inside of it and show you what you need to do if you want to build one of these antennas so this is where the magic happens but let me tell you it's not really magic at all this is all we have inside this little project box this box is one that i um i repurposed this was actually being used for an end fed half wave testing so hence why i've used it it probably could be uh, a little bit neater but you can see our SO239 connection here. You can see our ground connection here for the radials. And you can see our antenna connection in the top. Now, if you look inside the box there, all we have is a little coil. And we have a piece of coax. This is RG142 coax, high power coax, that's acting as a capacitor. And that's just sealed off at the end there. Um, so, this wire, this is 2 millimeter um, enameled wire. And I've got 10 and a half turns, but really use 11 turns. So this is 11 turns uh, around a one inch former. Okay, so 25 mil former or one inch, uh, 11 turns. Connect one end to the center pin of your SO239. Connect the other end to your antenna connection. And then you have your piece of coax here. So this is just a 50, this black length here, this is 50 centimeters long. So cut your 50, sorry, sorry, 50 millimetres long, uh, I do apologise, or 2 inch long. So connect one side, doesn't matter which side, so I've connected the centre conductor to my ground connection. And then the shield side of this little bit of coax, I've connected to the antenna side there. So this is our little LC match, and it works absolutely fantastic. This type of match is, um, you know, completely adaptable. You can do this for any band of your choice, so I do urge you to give it a try. So if we go and take a look at this antenna in the flesh, we can see that it's actually really, really simple. It's literally three bits of wire with this matching unit. So that's the matching unit itself. We've got the vertical element running all the way up this 12 meter spider beam pole. And then we've got two quarter wave radials, as I've talked about. And these just run over to electric fence poles so two of those and then of course we have our coax which runs back to our shack so an incredibly um, simple antenna uh, if you want to do this yourself now if we actually take a look at the SWR charts for this you can see that they could be better and that's not because the software's out that's just because of me and I could have uh, you know I, I kind of made a little mistake when I was making the um, the inductor it was just a little bit short and um, that's just my measurement error if i added another turn <coughs> then it would have been right but as you can see at the bottom of the band it's like 1.3 at the top of the band excuse me <coughs> it's like 1.5 so still a fantastic match uh, it just shows that the software works uh, Mike zero Oscar, Papa X-ray. good afternoon delta fox zero delta alpha df zero da kilo kilo six bravo tango Delta Florida 8, Victor Papa. HP9, Echo Romeo Novampus. Sugar Papa for Alpha Whiskey. So there we are. That's the 5 8 wave vertical, and I think it performed absolutely beautifully. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed building this antenna, and I think it is a great performer. How much better is it over a quarter wave or a half wave? Well, the modeling says there's probably not a lot in it, but I think it's worth certainly worth doing and um, you know that's what this hobby is all about it's about experimenting there so i encourage you to go and try and build this antenna or build it for any band if 
any band, you know, if you've only got a pole that's say um, uh, six or seven meters, uh, you know, build one for ten meters, you know, that 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 type of thing, you know. So I mean, this is a completely uh, adaptable um, antenna system there. Now, yes, it's monoband, but I love monoband antennas. Uh, give me a preference, and I'll take monoband performance any day of the week over multiband performance here. I really do think that they 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 have the edge. Okay, seventy three, all the best, and we'll catch you on the next one.